Hi, I'm Jamie Stillway, and I'm here with Acoustic Guitar, and I'm here to talk about how to put some new creativity into your finger style playing. A lot of us, when we start uh, learning finger picking, we, we learn a basic pattern like Travis picking or just an arpeggio, like if you've ever learned how to play House of the Rising Sun, and you know you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And you might think, how do I, what's next? Uh, so hopefully we've got some examples here that will help you uh, start putting your own style in your finger style playing. First, we're gonna start with uh, major scales. And if you don't know what a major scale is, don't worry, we're gonna take it easy and we're just gonna go on a E major scale up the first string. So this is example one. And notice I wasn't too concerned about which finger to use. I just used my first finger because this is gonna get challenging in just a second. Okay, so uh, in example two, the next step is to add a bass note to the notes of the scale that you're playing. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna pinch each note at the same time, which is just, I call it pinching, just playing the first string and the sixth string in unison, and so, again, nice and slow, and I'll go back down, and if you wanted to, you could start to think about which, uh, which finger you're going to use on your picking hand. So I just used my index finger and my thumb the whole time, but uh, you could start to think about alternating between the two because as you increase your tempos, you're gonna, you're gonna need that so you could do. So, after quarter notes, we're, we're going to move on to eighth notes. And in example three, what we have is, I call this every other, so every other note of the scale is going to be a pinch. So you'll have. Um, and if that's, if that, you know, for some that might have gotten quite challenging right out of the gate. So before moving on, I would suggest spending a lot of time doing that. A lot of people, when they, when they start that, they want to go. And we're trying to have two separate voices. Uh, so also if you're going to play eighth notes and you're going to start to go a little faster, this isn't the most efficient way to play it when you're going up one string. Uh, so in example number four, we're going to move the same scale, our E major scale, as eighth notes, but we're going to start on the ninth fret of the third string, and so we would have... And again, you know, don't, I, I strongly recommend not just practicing, you know, up and down for a long time. You know, you want to try and think about everything you're playing and, and start to make it, you know, music. So you could go. Or whatever. Uh, it's up to you. This is about putting your own style and finger style after all. Uh, so example five, we're moving on to 16th notes. Uh, so now you're going to have four notes over one bass note. So you're going to have Uh, 
it seems like a, a nice time to talk about these exercises in conjunction with your use of a metronome. So I have a metronome right here. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, a metronome is your friend, contrary to what you might think when you first start using one. Uh, so we'll do the 16th notes in example five and give yourself some time to think about how it's going to sound. You know, so... I always like to pause and give myself time, like say I'm going to go back to example four and I'm going to play eighth notes now. So, so there we just had the metronome set at 60 beats per minute, and if that's too fast, I recommend slowing it down. Uh, so example number six, uh, we have triplets. Uh, if, you know, if you're into playing Irish music or something, these, these happen, or blues. The triplet feel happens a lot in blues, so you have... Uh, again, if you're just getting started, uh, I often recommend that people don't get in the habit of keeping their pinky on the top of the guitar when they play. Um, I, I know that everybody has an opinion on this. I personally, I think it's better to get used to having a free floating hand. I often call that the pinky kickstand. So try and keep that up in the air if you can. With regard to the pinky on the top of the, on the, top of the soundboard here, I think that it's best not to have it because I think if you if you get in the habit of holding it on here, you're going to possibly develop a lot of tension all the way up here through your forearm. So again, it's nice to have it moving freely about the cabin, as it were. So for week two, once you've got your E major scale going up the first string down pretty well, it's easy to add a harmony note, such as example number two, we have... And there I just played the notes by themselves, so if I play it as I wrote it, <laughs> it would sound like... And also what I've done here is I've switched uh, the bass note to half note, so you don't always have to just keep this going, unless that's the sound you're looking for. Uh, so again... Another thing I really like to do when I'm playing harmonized pairs like this is do a sort of, a, I love to slide. I can't get enough of that. And also another idea you could do is sort of stagger your picking with your right hand a little bit. So you could do something like. Example eight is how we're going to apply those harmonized sixths into, you know, a little bit of a musical passage. So we have. Of course, harmonized string pairs happen all over the neck. And for this, we're just going to stick with the sixth that we just did. And we're also now going to add these thirds, which happen on adjacent strings. So example nine shows you this idea, still in the key of E. So we've got. And again, you should apply this to all the things you've learned up until this point, so you could practice your quarter notes, eighth notes. Whatever you want to play. 
Important to note, these shapes in example nine are going to show up in next week's workout for our banjo rolls. So I would spend a lot of time and make sure you've really got those under your fingers. Now we're going to look at banjo rolls on the guitar. And some of you might be thinking, why, why on earth would I want to play banjo rolls on guitars? Uh, I think that they're, they're pretty easy to play once you get them in your muscle memory. And when played at a very fast tempo, they sound pretty cool, in my opinion. So to start with um, example number 10 here, we're just gonna go really slowly. So I think about this pattern as thumb one, two, thumb one, two, thumb one. So when applied to the open four strings, the top four strings, we have example 10, so we have. And when played on the open strings, it doesn't sound like much Again, you have to spend some time just repeating that over and over again. And wait until you're ready for it before you speed up. So slowly. Build your tempo. And then example number 11 shows that when applied to our harmonized thirds that we learned in example nine. So we would have. That still sounds nice to me. Uh, it'll sound a little bit more like a banjo if you speed it up. So then I'm gonna go even faster. And for those of you who play with finger picks, I would recommend playing that with finger picks. I normally play those with my picks on because it's a lot easier to get the tempo going really quickly. So I consider this to be a forward roll. And in my what I call a backward roll, it might be incorrect. To reverse it, you would have uh, thumb two one, thumb two one, thumb one, essentially. And it would sound like. a different sound you you can try it uh, again okay so for week four this is where the real fun starts is when you get to put it all together all the ideas that you've been spending all month on example number 12 is just a suggestion of what you could do with these ideas so we've got some harmonized six some banjo rolls some scales uh, again this is just a jumping off point just a suggestion I encourage you to make up your own tunes. So here we go. Remember, go really slowly through all these examples. Take your time when going from week to week. There's really no rush in any of this. It's the journey, not the destination. And if you play notes wrong, who cares? It doesn't matter. Just, you know, again, 
try and be as musical as you can. Uh, and that's it. <laughs>